Having trouble with your coolant temperature gauge staying stuck on cold even though the engine feels warm? That's not something to ignore, my friend. Keeping an eye on your coolant temperature is key, because if your engine overheats, it can lead to some serious damage you don't want to deal with. Let's sort this out before it gets worse. Faulty Engine Coolant Temperature Sensor The coolant temperature sensor might be sending the wrong info to your dashboard. Some cars have one sensor, others have two. If there's just one, it handles both the engine control unit's temperature and the gauge. If there are two sensors, one talks to the gauge and the other works with the engine control module. These sensors are simple to check with a multimeter, but you'll need to know the right values. Your car's repair manual should have that info. If you're planning to swap out a sensor, make sure you're replacing the one connected to the temperature gauge if your car has two of them. It'll save you a lot of guesswork later on. Faulty gauge or cluster. A bad temperature gauge can be tricky, especially since most modern cars have it built into the instrument cluster. Sometimes you might be able to fix it by replacing the gauge itself or repairing any bad solder joints if you find them. If not, you may need to replace the entire instrument cluster. If you're not comfortable with soldering, you can take the cluster to an expert who can handle it for you. That said, faulty clusters aren't very common, but they can be pricey to replace, and they'll often need programming afterward. So, it's a smart move to rule out other possible issues before deciding to replace the cluster. If you know how to use an ohm tester, you can test the temperature gauge yourself. It's a good way to confirm if the cluster is actually the problem. Bad thermostat. The thermostat in your car controls how much coolant flows through the radiator. If it gets stuck wide open, the engine might not warm up properly and the temperature might stay too low. However, if you push the car hard enough, you might see the temperature creep up a little from the minimum mark. If you notice that your temperature gauge is climbing slowly and not reaching the right level, it could mean you've got a problem with the thermostat. It's something worth checking out before it causes bigger issues. Broken wirings. If your car has two temperature sensors, with one just for the gauge, you need to check the wiring between the sensor and the gauge. You can also test the sensor by using a multimeter from the cluster connector. If your car has only one sensor that handles both the gauge and the ECU, the issue is more likely in the wires between the sensor and the ECU. It could also be between the gauge and the ECU, so you'll want to check for any broken wires in these areas. Using a multimeter to measure resistance is the best way to track down the problem, but this does take some knowledge about car electronics. If you're not comfortable handling this yourself, it might be best to have a mechanic check it out for you. A repair manual can also give you the proper wiring diagram to make sure you're testing the right connections. It's worth taking the time to get it right. Corrosion and plug connectors. Corroded connectors are a common issue when dealing with a faulty temperature gauge. To fix this, clean the connectors at the sensor, the engine control unit, and the cluster. Use an electronic cleaner spray to get rid of the corrosion. If you notice corrosion, it could mean the connector seals aren't doing their job properly. You might need to inspect the seals and either repair or replace them to prevent the problem from coming back. Taking care of this now can save you trouble down the road. Air in the cooling system. Air trapped in the cooling system can mess with your temperature gauge, making it stay on cold. If there's an air bubble right where the sensor sits, it can stop the gauge from working properly. You might also notice the gauge fluctuating if air is causing trouble. If you think there's air in the system, you'll need to bleed it out using a specific bleeding method. This will get rid of the air and allow the cooling system to work as it should. Taking care of this promptly can save you from more problems later on. Broken engine control unit. This applies if your car uses one combined temperature sensor with two pins. Sometimes the engine control unit, or ECU, can be the issue. If the temperature info goes through the ECU first and then to the cluster, you'll need an OBD2 scanner to check for trouble codes in the ECU. See if the ECU is getting the temperature readings. If the ECU shows the temperature info but the cluster doesn't, make sure they're using the same sensor. If they are, you'll need to measure the temperature output on the ECU. This is a job best left to a car electronics expert since replacing the ECU is expensive and requires coding. You don't want to replace it unless you're absolutely sure it's faulty. How to fix a car temperature gauge that stays on cold? When dealing with engine problems on modern cars, the first thing you should do is read the fault codes using an OBD2 scanner. These codes can give you a lot of useful information and help you pinpoint the issue, saving you time and money. If the code points to a problem with the temperature gauge, that's where you should begin your diagnosis. 
If your car is having temperature-related troubles, start by checking the coolant temperature sensor. After you find the sensor, look up the correct ohm values for your car model and test the sensor with a multimeter. If the readings are off, it's time to replace the sensor. To test if the thermostat is causing issues, you'll want to check if the coolant is staying cold because the thermostat might be stuck open. Use a laser thermometer to measure the temperature of the coolant coming out of the engine. If the coolant feels warm but the engine itself isn't properly heating up, you might need to remove the thermostat and see if it's working like it should. When it comes to tricky car problems, don't hesitate to ask for help. Modern cars can be complicated, and there's no shame in taking your car to a professional mechanic. They're usually fast at diagnosing problems like this, and it could save you money in the long run. If you try replacing parts without being sure what's wrong, you might end up spending more than necessary. Sometimes it's just smarter to let the experts handle it.